Good morning. I wanted to go over uh, EVC today and some of the changes of the EVC components. Basically, the uh, diesel engines today are all electronically controlled, but they're also controlled by multiple computers. That's where your electronic vessel control EVC comes from. So we have multiple nodes, which are multiple computers. You're going to have the ECU, which is the engine. You'll have the powertrain con computer, which is the H uh, PCU, excuse me. That's for the shifting of the drive or shifting of the transmission. It'll have to do with fuel tanks, water levels. We'll get to that a little bit more. So that's the second, the middle uh, node. And then we'll get into the HCU, which is the helm control unit. So that is what this is going to be uh, receiving and sending information from. Uh, I'll get into the harnessing, uh, some of the functionality of the harnessing today. Um, I also wanted to get into the uh, manuals and I'll show you the installation poster at a later date, but that really is how you connect um, the engine, how do you harness it up. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that, and that'll really get into how the um, each individual EVC system, A, B, C, E, E, is harnessed up and how you connect it. So that should make it a little clearer. Let's get started on the changes. So EVC started with EVC A and those boxes, which would be nodes, were basically metal. An aluminum housing looks very much like this. It had a little cover on it, but it just said EVC on it. Every generation after that was introduced with a change. So they added something to the EVC platform. So EVC B, B2 was introduction of IPS. Um, EVCC was a big hardware change, and we'll go over that, and there's several different varieties of that. Uh, EVCC was the last generation that had this type of control station, so I wanted to go over that first with you guys today. So, EVCC, C1+, plus, C2, and then EVCC3. Books, books you're going to want to get, and I hopefully you've downloaded these already, and that is the Group 30 manual. Okay, the Group 30 manual is the diagnostic manual. This manual has all of your diagnostics and how do you diagnose the engine, how do you diagnose the EVC platform, how do you diagnose this. Um, there are a couple of different versions of that. I will go over that as well later in another video. Um, there are EVC um, Group 30 manuals and there are engine manuals, okay? So the Group 30 manual is really major. That's what you absolutely have to have if you're trying to diagnose an EVC-based engine or an EVC problem. Remember that Vodi is the only tool that will work with all hollow penna diesel engines. Most diesel engine manufacturers, it's proprietary, so you have to have their diagnostic tool. All right, the other book. This is another Group 30 manual, but this is the EVC manual. So that's different from the engine. The engine has its own Group 30 manual for diagnostics. This is for all of this, okay? So you also might need that book as well if you're working on this. The other manual you probably already know about is the Group 2026 book. This is for the engine and this is the engine components. So this is strictly if you have to take something apart, you have to put something back together, you need this book. If you're doing a water pump removal, if you're doing power steering pump change, this is the book you need, Group 2026. So those are the three books, really, any time that I'm going to work on a Volvo diesel engine, I go get immediately. I go up on Partner Network, and I look up the serial number. I get the Group 2026 book, which is the engine book. I get the Group 30 manual for the engine, and I get the Group 30 manual for the EVC system. There's one other manual, which I don't have, which is called Group 37. Group 37 is the wiring diagram. That's something really in gas product that's really important that you need to get the latest manual, but it's also available for the diesel product, okay? So that goes over the manuals. You may have known that, but I wanted to reiterate, get them right away, download them, put them on a flash drive, put them on your diagnostic laptop, create a folder so you know they're there so you're not hunting around for them if you need to do diagnostics, all right? All right, and the next thing I wanted to go over was the functionality and the harnessing of an EVC system. You may have done this in the uh, MT217 class, but it was quick. 
So I wanted to go over it a little bit more in detail and to reiterate what it is and how to do it and how easy it is. The term plug and play comes to mind. You all know what plug and play means. So any of these components, and if I look at these components, I have an LCD display. This will give me information about the engine, uh, the helm, about virtually anything on the boat. This has since been changed to a new seven inch display. We'll go over a little bit about that later, but obviously it's like an old, com old computer to a new computer or an old television to a new television, you know, 4K, smart TVs, all that. So as we go through the generations, EVCA was very simple, EVCB a little more complicated, C, then D, and now it gets the highest levels are an EVCE. Um, as you probably have looked already online, uh, you're noticing that there's EVC 2.0. So EVC was the original, that's what this is, and that's what the next generation of controls is. EVC 2.0 is a completely new platform. Um, the software is totally different, it works totally different, all right, on here, we also have TAC. The minimum requirement for any of the EVC product is to have a tachometer that has an LCD display. And the reason for that is they need that so you can display the functionality when you're calibrating controls. Remember, what is the calibration process? I'll probably ask a test question about that. Remember that you always start in neutral, okay? And the control settings are start in neutral, end in neutral. Okay, so there's a display button panel. You go into your calibration mode. That is in the installation poster. So make sure that you go and get an installation poster. What I'll do is probably give you the, in fact, I will, I'll give you a serial number for one of the engines for that. Um, starting in neutral, if you're in calibration mode, in neutral, you're going to then put it in four D10. Push and hold the neutral button for a second. Push it full throttle, push the neutral button for a second, go through neutral to reverse detent, push the neutral button, full reverse. Even if it hits the dash, it's okay. That's the full throw of it, push the neutral button. Come back to the neutral position, push the neutral button. And if you're done with calibration, then push the neutral button again. And if it took, it'll put it back to the display screen and everything will look normal and calibrate the controls. If at any point you made a mistake, you did it in the wrong process, it didn't like what you did, a loose connection, who knows, whatever, it will simply boot you out of calibration mode. So what's nice about the later systems in EVCC, EVCD, EVCE, is in the display, whether you only have a tachometer, you don't have to have an LCD, you have to have this to see it, it will show you what procedure you're going through. 1.1, you started in neutral, that's where you started calibration. If you go to the neutral uh, four D10 and you push the neutral button, it'll say 1.2, 1.3. And so, if you get into other calibrations where you're getting into joystick controls, you get into IPS, it's another level. I probably won't have time for that. There's another section in the installation poster that gives you step-by-step -step instructions for that. So it's all laid out. Don't forget, the installation poster is your friend. If you're new to it, uh, it's a new product for me, I go get those three books and I get the installation poster. Always do it by serial.